NASA's moon landings occurred over 50 years ago, and it may seem like NASA has shown no interest in revisiting the moon. However, is this perception accurate? In this video, we'll explore the reasons behind NASA's apparent reluctance to return to the moon after the Apollo missions and discuss the exciting prospect of humans living and working on the lunar surface in the near future. America's Race to Lunar Glory During the early 1960s, the United States formulated plans to send astronauts to the moon. These plans were first made public when President John F. Kennedy addressed Congress on May 25, 1961. One of the key statements in his address was, I believe that our nation should commit itself to the goal of reaching the moon before the end of this decade. The objective was to successfully land a human on the moon and ensure their safe return to Earth. Notably, just a few weeks before Kennedy's speech, Russia had achieved a major milestone by sending Yuri Gagarin into space in a space capsule. Gagarin became the first human to accomplish this feat as he orbited the Earth and safely returned. This historic space flight earned Gagarin the title of the first person in space. The United States was determined to secure its own significant title and record in space exploration spurred on by this achievement. A historic journey to the lunar surface. The objective of landing the first human on the moon was a prestigious goal that aimed to redeem the United States in the global race for space supremacy. Five years after President Kennedy's historic speech, the moment had arrived to launch the first Apollo space capsule into orbit. On January 27, 1967, a ground exercise was conducted at the Cape Canaveral spaceport in Florida as a prelude to the rocket's actual launch. Unfortunately, what was meant to be a routine test for the three-man crew turned into a tragic event. A fire broke out inside the space capsule and due to a malfunction in the opening mechanism, astronauts Gus Grissom, Edward H. White, and Roger B. Chaffee lost their lives in the Apollo 1 spacecraft before it could be launched into space. The nation was left in shock, but President Kennedy remained resolute in pushing forward with his lunar program. Just 18 months later, Apollo 7 successfully completed an Earth orbit mission with a human crew on board. While most people today primarily remember the actual moon landing, many may not be aware of the numerous test flights and Apollo missions that preceded the historic lunar landing. A significant but often overlooked moment occurred in March 1969 during the Apollo 8 mission. The Apollo 8 astronauts became the first humans to witness the dark side of the moon. Some enthusiasts of the paranormal and mysteries believed that this mission had a specific purpose, to investigate what might be concealed on the far side of the moon. The far side, perpetually shrouded in darkness, is not observable with telescopes, and rumors had circulated that something enigmatic might be hidden there. Whether President Kennedy and NASA had such notions when launching Apollo 8 remains uncertain and may never be definitively confirmed. Officially, astronauts Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders reported seeing nothing unusual during their 10 orbits around the moon, and it was deemed safe. With this achievement, the first manned journey to such a distance was successfully completed, paving the way for human lunar landings. In the same month, the Apollo 9 crew tested the transfer from the command module to the lunar module in Earth's orbit. Apollo 10 repeated this maneuver in lunar orbit, but did not attempt a landing. Finally, on the morning of July 16, 1969, the historic Apollo 11 mission was launched from the Kennedy Space Center. Aboard were two astronauts who would become household names, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. After 76 hours of space travel, Apollo 11 reached the moon's orbit 
on July 19th. The next day, at 1.46 p.m. local time at the Houston, Texas Control Center, the lunar module, with Armstrong and Aldrin aboard, separated from the command module where Collins remained. Two hours later, the lunar module successfully touched down on the southwestern edge of the Sea of Tranquility. Armstrong's iconic words, the eagle has landed, became etched in history, as did his famous statement just before taking his first step on the lunar surface at 10.56 p.m. That's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. Nineteen minutes later, Aldrin followed Armstrong, becoming the second person to set foot on the moon. The rest, as they say, is history. This monumental achievement was followed by six more manned Apollo missions, with five of them successfully landing on the moon. Apollo 13 faced difficulties shortly after launch due to a service module explosion, forcing it to abort its lunar landing mission and return to Earth which led to a dramatic rescue operation. Unfortunately, Apollo 13 did not achieve its intended lunar landing. In December 1972, astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt of Apollo 17 became the last humans to walk on the moon. Since then, no human has ventured to the lunar surface, marking more than 50 years since our last lunar expedition. Why NASA left the moon? NASA officially justified the discontinuation of the lunar program, citing both financial constraints and scientific reasons. They argued that lunar research had been adequately covered after six successful landings. The post-moon missions era held many more exciting prospects, although they wouldn't involve human exploration. Instead, NASA turned to probes like Pioneer, Mariner, and Voyager, which accomplished remarkable feats by venturing into more distant regions of our solar system. These missions provided valuable insights into our planetary neighborhood and the previously largely unexplored outer planets. The Moon was deemed to have exhausted its scientific interest and public enthusiasm for lunar missions had significantly waned. While the Apollo 11 landing was watched by a global audience of 530 to 600 million people, only a few million tuned in for the Apollo 17 landing. Additionally, there were rumors among experts that NASA didn't want to push its luck indefinitely, particularly after the close call with Apollo 13. The potential loss of astronauts was a sobering reality considered in every Apollo mission. It wasn't until many years after Apollo 11 that the U.S. government released film footage showing President Richard Nixon delivering a pre-recorded eulogy for astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. This pre-taped address was prepared in case of a dramatic and tragic outcome during the flight. Television stations could have immediately broadcast Nixon's speech in the event of such a disaster. In the speech, which may seem unusual today, Nixon praised the astronauts' courage and emphasized that they hadn't died in vain, but had brought great honor to their nation. Additional details about the Apollo emergency protocol were revealed, indicating that in an extreme situation, NASA astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins were officially allowed to either accept their fate or take their own lives on the moon or in space. NASA's Lunar Farewell The early 1970s witnessed global protests from various social groups that felt marginalized and disadvantaged. In the United States, the civil rights movement led by African Americans and, later, women's rights activists spearheaded vigorous protests against the government. The core message of these uprisings against space travel was a clear condemnation of the perceived irresponsibility in investing billions of US dollars in moon missions while abject poverty and inequality persisted on Earth. In the US, racial segregation had been legally overturned by the Supreme Court in 1954, but achieving true equality of opportunity remained a distant goal. 
Under the leadership of figures like Ralph Abernathy, a close associate of Martin Luther King Jr., and Black Panther activist Jesse Jackson, African Americans nationwide rallied against what they saw as misplaced priorities. They called on the government to redirect the substantial funds allocated to space exploration toward essential social projects and poverty alleviation. On January 5th, 1972, President Nixon made the announcement to conclude the Apollo moon landings after the planned Apollo 17 mission. Officially, this decision was framed as a strategic reallocation of resources for future projects rather than a response to public protests. Nevertheless, it did lead to significant budget reductions. In 1969, during the Apollo 11 mission, NASA's budget stood at approximately $4.4 billion. By 1972, this budget had contracted to about $3.5 billion, with further cuts to follow. From the 2000s onward, NASA's budget began to rise again, thanks in part to advancements in technology and discoveries made by instruments like the Hubble Space Telescope. Today, it exceeds $20 billion annually, and there is little opposition to this funding. In fact, most Americans express support for NASA's projects and take pride in the leading role the USA plays in space exploration. The Lunar Exploration Renaissance The initiative set to return people to the moon is named Artemis. Plans for revisiting the moon and establishing a manned lunar outpost were reportedly shelved within NASA for a considerable duration. There seemed to be little impetus to launch a new lunar mission until the competitive spirit spurred by private space companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin rekindled NASA's lunar ambitions. In 2017, NASA is said to have revitalized the Artemis project, spurred by the impending launch of Elon Musk's lunar-capable rocket in the following year. The Artemis program is set to mark humanity's return to the moon, with the first mission scheduled for 2024. Concerns arose as the launches of Artemis space shuttles faced repeated delays, leading to rumors that NASA might reconsider its commitment. The situation took a turn when Artemis 1, an uncrewed mission, journeyed to the moon in November 2022, garnering moderate international interest. Anticipation is expected to surge when the crewed Artemis 2 mission lands on the lunar surface in 2024. What are your perspectives on these lunar missions? Do you consider lunar exploration to be significant? And should humans establish a presence on the moon? Share your thoughts in the comments section.